Hey guys, this is Sean, and today we're going to be looking at uh, rebuilding the Kanger T3 bottom coil assembly. Uh, these have a very special place in my heart um, because I've tried a lot of the top coil assemblies, uh, the C2, C3, Vision Nova, Kanger T2, uh, and all left me with dry hits often, even after doing this uh, goofy little dipping upside down nonsense. A lot of other folks I've talked to haven't had that issue. I am a chain vapor and really could not get around it. So, uh, but I love this bottom coil assembly to death. Um, so yeah, let's check out some of the tools we'll need to uh, to get started here. Um, if all you have is a, co a conventional pair of needle nose pliers, these will get the job done if you're careful. Um, personally, I like to use these cone ended needle nose pliers uh, because they will not damage any of the rubber components. Uh, inside, such as the rubber grommet that I'm about to show you in a moment. Uh, it's also really good at removing the uh, center pin without damaging anything, so uh, those are awesome to have. Uh, we'll be using a pair of wire cutters, of course you can use uh, scissors, really anything that can cut uh, precision-wise. Um, nice little resistance meter. Uh, these are really good if you're going to be doing this often uh, and you want to keep your coil heads dry. Um, you want to make sure they don't have any shorts and if you really want to know where uh, the resistance lies on your coil head then I definitely recommend one of these. It'll run you about 20 bucks. I picked mine up at madvapes.com. Um, you'll need the, uh, the uh, adapter to fit the Kanger T3 coil heads. Uh, this is called an Ego C atomizer to battery adapter. They have them there for just a couple bucks. Uh, if you have trouble finding it, feel free to give them a call. Very nice folks. So we have that. Now we're going to be using some uh, Nichrome 32 gauge 60 resistance wire. That's what I use personally. Um, I go for lower resistance. Uh, lower resistance in my uh, in my atomizer is mostly because I have uh, non-variable voltage batteries as a fallback, and I want to be able to vape no matter which battery I have uh, that, that's that's still alive at that point. Um, we'll also be using a nifty little pin. Uh, this is good for stabilizing the wick uh, when you're wrapping the coil around it. It also leaves uh, ample distance between the coil and the wick. Um, that's important. If you wrap your wick too tight with your coil, um, it's not going to be able to absorb liquid as quickly and it's going to leave you with dry hits. Um, if you leave it too loose, uh, that will result in kind of getting a burnt taste because you just have coil that's, uh, that, that, that's, that's exposed to, uh, to open air a little bit too much. So you really want to minimize the, uh, the coil that's exposed to open air. Um, lastly, we'll be, uh, Using three millimeter silica wick today. Now, if you guys need some of this, I have a uh, bunch at a really good price uh, on my eBay store, which I'll link to in the notes here. Um, so please, if you're in need, check that out. And uh, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to remove this top stem. This can be done with a pair of pliers or a nice firm grip and a little bit of wiggling action. It comes right off. Now you're going to be left with the flavor wicks that rest on top of the uh, the coiled wick in the bottom. We're going to remove those. Um, if this is the first atomizer that you've ever rebuilt, these are essential. For one, they fill the gap in between the end of the stem and the uh, the coiled wick. Um, that way you don't have gurgling because too much liquid's being pulled through. Um, two, uh, they get their name flavor wicks from being flavor wicks. Without them, it will taste like you're vaping just air, pretty much whatever flavor you use. Uh, and lastly, they are really good at stopping uh, the, the popping hot liquid off the coil from uh, getting into your mouth. So, essential. Okay, so take a good look at the coiled wick inside of this unit. Providing I can get this focused. I know it's a little bit bright, but, uh, okay. So now, we're going to be getting into the bottom of this unit. We're going to take our cone-shaped needle-nose pliers. We're going to put one end of the plier into the, uh, the center of that, that stopper plug, and the other end of the plier on the outer edge of it. 
and uh, get a nice firm grip and gently wiggle and pull that plug out. There you have it. Okay, next we're going to be removing this uh, rubber grommet. Again, soft, firm grip. A little bit of wiggling action and it comes right out with uh, minimal effort. Now the coiled wick, this should come out with the least effort because it's not being anchored in by anything anymore. And there we have it. Okay. So, the next step is going to be assembling our coiled wick. So let's get our pin handy. Let's get our 3mm silica wick handy. That's a pun because I'm all hands right now, as far as you folks can tell. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't say it was a comedy show. So, I'm going to pinch and leave about maybe inch, inch and a half of uh, coil near the bottom to thread through the uh, coil head in just a moment. I'm going to start wrapping this around the wick. Um, now, I mentioned I like this to be really low resistance. So I'm only going to wrap around about four times. That's going to give me somewhere around uh, 1.4 uh, ohms of resistance, uh, give or take 0.2 ohms. Um, so, super handy. Now I'm going to remove the pin. Go ahead and pinch both ends of the coil. Give it a nice little twist just to clear some of that space. Again, we don't want it too tight, but not too loose. It should just gently rest against the wick. That looks pretty darn good. Okay, now we're going to take the uh, ends here and kind of straighten them out so that they're more easily threaded through the uh, through the coil head. I'm going to pinch and kind of squeeze these wires together to kind of get them to spring together. Then when they spring back out, they should be more evenly distributed, like so. Let's go ahead now we can have a little bit more play. Let's go ahead and uh, thread those through the coil head, like so. There. You like you'd like those uh, coils to be in the uh, in the center. You don't want them touching either outer edge of this metal. Otherwise, it will short it out. And we're gonna put the rubber stopper right back in the top so as to hold that wick in place. If you're using anything less than 3mm wick, you might, uh, you might want to put another wick on top just to make sure that, that that's a nice snug hold. Otherwise, your, your wick and your coil are going to bounce around on you when you're trying to uh, secure the other ends. Um, I also want to mention that you can use the same, uh, the same gauge nichrome wire. Um, for, for high resistance, you can get up to 2 ohms by making maybe about 6 or 7 wraps around, even eight wraps around the uh, the wick. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the bottom of the uh, at the bottom of the unit. Um, maybe a little bit difficult to see, but what I like to do is I like to take the end that's closest to the to the outer edge of that hole. And I like to take that and use it as my ground edge. That ground edge is going to be or that ground coil. The ground coil is the uh, coil that's going to be using the uh, the base as the ground and then I call the uh, the hot coil the one that touches the uh, the center the center pin so in this case I'm going to use this coil as the ground coil I'm going to pull on it firmly gently bend it over the edge of that lip and hold it in place again keep in mind you want to create as little um, as little coil exposed to open air as possible. Okay, so now I'm going to straighten that out just a little bit, the uh, the, op the other end of the coil. I'm going to slide this rubber grommet right down the middle of that coil. We're going to use our cone-shaped pliers, grab him, and gently insert him into that center 
hole, which may be a little bit tricky. Um, you can feel free to use some liquid to, to lubricate that hole, and it'll go in a lot easier. Let's go ahead and gently press in around the outer edges of that grommet. So he's in there nice and snug. Okay, now take the other end of the coil to the opposite end of the head. So we have one wrapping down, one wrapping up. We're going to get our, uh, our pin. Gently insert him nice and snug into the bottom of the assembly again. If you push him too hard, that grommet's going to flatten out and it's going to close the, uh, close the airway of your atomizer. So you don't want to do that. You, you, you really don't want to see the diameter of the, uh, of the grommet exceed the diameter, or diameter of the plug too much. That, that I would say is just about perfect. So, okay. Next thing we want to do is trim out the, uh, Trim out the excess coil. You want to get as close to that center pin as possible. Um, if you leave too much, it's going to short the uh, it's going to short the coil. So there, we've just snipped away the excess. It looks pretty darn good, if you ask me. Actually, have a little bit left. Okay. So it looks pretty lovely. So now we can take the time to uh, pop the stem off. Let's see what it looks like inside. That looks pretty good. The coil is centered. We have we don't have any hot spots, um, which is uh, coil coil ends touching each other. Um, I may pull just a little bit to the right here to get that coil more centered. That looks pretty good. So, let's take our wire cutters and start to trim off the excess wick that we do not need. Okay, and last but not least, we should now add our flavor wicks. Now, you could get uh, separate wick, one millimeter, something like that to do this. Um, I find it just as easy, easy to take uh, two strands of this three millimeter wick and use that as my flavor wick. So I'm going to make a nice O shape. I'll explain that in a second. O shape. Pull that nice and taut. I'm going to zoom in here. Give me just a moment. Okay, so nice O shape. I'm going to bring that nice and tautly together. Insert that in the coil head. This part can be a little tricky. Okay. Hold that down and reinsert your stem back into the assembly. Now that we have that much done, we can trim off the excess again. Oops, got a little stray. There we go, that's a beauty. Not too bad. Last but not least, let's test our resistance, which is roughly about 1.2 ohms. Not too bad in my book. So, all right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope uh, this clearly explained the uh, the process of rebuilding this atomizer uh, in case you were having trouble. So, all right. Have a good one.